These collections are the evidence of life on Earth. I think of a collection as a time machine, a space and time machine. I can go back to the specimen that I collected at a certain date from a certain place and gain infinite amount of new knowledge about what was happening to that specimen when it was collected. The scientific research collection is like a library, but instead of books, we have specimens, scientific research specimens. So each individual specimen is documenting that critter, that animal, at that point in time, at that place on Earth. The Academy was founded in 1853, and we've been collecting since then to understand life on Earth. Today, we actually have over 46 million specimens. Like other natural history museums, many of our past collecting practices were rooted in colonialism and racism that we're just beginning to address now. Today, we listen to and partner with local communities and scientists to understand ecosystem health around the world and in our own backyard. Field expeditions by Academy scientists and their partners are a really important way that our collections are built, but they're just one way. We often work with folks like U.S. Fish and Wildlife or U.S. Customs to serve as the repository for specimens that have been confiscated because they were obtained illegally. But more and more frequently, um, our collections are built through means like roadkill or beach salvage of marine mammals or seabirds. We receive lots of donations of specimens from private donors. One great example of that in the geology collections is the former collections of Union Oil of California. It contains roughly a million vials of microfossil samples that date back a hundred million years. A lot of what researchers do with specimens is either morphological or molecular or genetic. And so for the morphological work, people are looking at the shape, the structure, size, and physical characteristics. We're using tools like calipers, rulers, microscopes, and they can be dissecting or light or compound scopes, and then some newer technology like CT scanning or structured light scanning, and then also x-rays. For the molecular work, you're using freezers to hold DNA samples, PCR machines, pipettes, sequencers, and other molecular lab equipment. We have been digitizing all of our collections to make them accessible online to international researchers and the public. To better understand our future, we have to know where we came from in the first place. And so we have these incredible collections to understand our past. And so we're able to look at the climates, the ecosystems before us, and it better informs where we're going as part of the ecosystem today. We are people of the basket. It's the very essence of who we are as Pomo people. What we were blessed with is an incredible supply of pristine basketry material. What the Academy has enabled us to do is, is to have pomo weavers, current pomo weavers come down and see a variety of techniques. So um, the baskets at the Academy are, are used as, as teaching tools, if you will, for a lot of the younger weavers that are, that are coming up. That's what fascinates me is the potential of every single specimen in our collection to reveal new knowledge knowledge we can't even at this time maybe anticipate fully because we maybe don't have the technologies developed to do that, but we take care of them for that future.